I grew up in Java. It's uh, no much for us left in Java. But uh, when I decide to move to Sumatra for conservation, I can feel like it's the best place for me to live. After I open my doors, I can see a lot of things very interesting in Sumatra. Punky Nanda Pratama is dedicating his life to conserving what's left of Sumatra's rainforests. And like so many of us, his energy comes from spending time in wild places. Very special moment for us. Hearing them kind of like the luckiest thing I've ever had. So cool. They are monogamous and always stay in a couple till they die, which is super romantic. And yeah, hopefully if it's just we can uh, get the clear shot of them. In an attempt to demonstrate just how many endangered and elusive species live in these rainforests, Punky and some friends started a camera trap project. They've captured some incredible footage. It's kind of like a new information for us to know about the biodiversity inside of the jungle. Indonesia's iconic wildlife relies on the health of these tropical rainforests. Look at that one, they have little babies on it. This meteorite leaf monkey is endangered species in South Sumatra. They only eat the young leaf of uh, the trees and we're really lucky to see them right now. Long time ago, this area is a pristine forest. It's supposed to be protected, but you can see around it's like open, like you can see a lot of light. It's kind of like a, a sign of like a destruction starting in this area illegally for coffee plantations that uh, threatened the flora and fauna in this area. These small plantations within protected areas create subtle, but continual habitat loss. And in some places, it's not subtle at all. Much of the world's supply of palm oil and rubber is grown in this region. Punky is collaborating with a local government conservation agency on a project to rescue flora from cleared land, like this old rubber plantation. Ya, permasalahan konservasi di Sumatera Selatan itu adalah kehilangan habitat baik flora maupun fauna karena adanya alih fungsi penggunaan lahan. Selain itu juga adanya ancaman dari perburuan liar uh, untuk flora maupun fauna itu sendiri. Itu mas, bulbul ini mas. Iya bulbul bulbul mas. Ambil, ambil deh. This is the area that um, we always like looking for because we know some of orchids like growing in the rubber plant. Kepunahan flora itu sudah di depan mata, sehingga kalau kita tidak segera bergerak bersama, ya kita anak cucu kita tidak akan pernah bisa melihat flora itu lagi. Rescued flora is then transferred into a large purpose-built greenhouse to be rehabilitated and propagated. Roughly, we have uh, about 5,000 specimens, uh, including Hoyas, Arrowheads, and Vern, and Nepenthes. All of them is native uh, species from Sumatra. This one is uh, Myrmocordia tuberosa, is an ant plant, and very famous right now as ornamental plants. And we found this on the ground, and you can see a lot of damage on the leaves. This is an orchid called Selogenus waniana. It's six months since we rescued from the destroyed land. It's been growing so well in our greenhouse. 
This orchid is called uh, Papiopedilum primulinum. It's endemic from uh, Sumatra. This is critically endangered and protected by law internationally, and also like highly poached by the orchid hunter. I'm very happy we, we have this specimen in our greenhouse, and hopefully in the future we will like working with these orchids in a tissue culture, and we will like bring them back to the wild. As the world has fallen in love with tropical plants, Punky has seen the illegal plant trade soar. People from another country trying to, yeah, want more and more exotic plants, and that's make the population of what plants like this plummeting down, and Sumatra is like highly damaged by that. To empower communities living on the front line of habitat destruction, Punky has yet another project underway. I like a single father with 1,000 kids. <laughs> I have education programs, and it's focusing in the area that have a highly damaging of illegal logging and also uh, wildlife conflict. Punky teaches in nine different schools, with some villages a six-hour walk from the closest road. It's really important to tell the clear information to the children because when I'm talking with the children, they will like absorb as much as possible the information and passing out to their parents. And that's why it's kind of like homemade uh, educator. People sometimes like thinking conservation kind of like a project in a, a year or two year or five year, but conservation kind of like lifetime work. You need to get into the community to understand what they need. People need help economically, and people will like to do everything to support their family. As a conservationist, we need to think about that, not just a blaming community, like shoot the animal or even like take the orchids or whatever. Being a conservationist, we need to be flexible with, uh, with everything that happening around. because of uh, conservation is like a collective work for everyone. As a human, we are a part of our ecosystem. And one of each species like disappear, human will disappear too. As long as the people, like a people like us, trying to share more about nature, share more about the loves, it will be like, uh, yeah, hopeful. And I believe that people time by time will yeah, understand how important nature for us because yeah nature not depend on people but people depend on nature that's the important things people to know and to understand